me off, of course. Where'd it go? Where are we to? <laughs> Don't see us. Ah, there we are. Mm -hmm. we're, we're officially live now. So okay. uh, I'm just going to tweet this out. And then I'm going to start the recorder. Unless you guys want to just make small talk for a few minutes and let the room fill up. No, we thought you were already going a couple seconds ago, so we're just waiting patiently. Start the <laughs> yeah, patient waiting. <laughs> Okay, so far no one said no sound. This, right, is good. this is good. Step in the right direction. All right, let's make a podcast. Ready? Yep. All right, this should be a fun one tonight. We've got Alex Kazemi with us. He's a pop artist, a creative director, and an author. His work's been featured in Apple Music, Dazed, V Magazine, Playboy, all over the place. And he's written an awesome book, I must say. It's called... Pop Magic, A Simple Guide to Bending Your Reality. So uh, looking forward to chatting about this. It was really inspiring. Alex, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really stoked. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I do really did. I, I liked your book. I thought it was very easy to digest for people that are new to magic and people also, I'm sure, that, that are, you know, very well versed in it. And it was inspiring. I found your story inspiring. I found... Uh, the uh your concepts and your principles inspiring so i really uh i don't know where you want to start i mean we could start on uh you know what brought you to writing the book i guess i mean there's a lot to get into you got quite the background and quite the journey to make in the book what do you think yeah i mean the reason i wanted to write the book was because i didn't see the kind of book about magic that i wanted to exist out there and i felt like i had to be the one to create it because I saw something shift in our cultural zeitgeist with um, how magic was being talked about in pop culture. Yeah. But then there were these like subreddit, you know, online message boards and all this kind of stuff that wouldn't really exist, you know, maybe 30 years ago. And I kind of wanted to capture how I saw people talking about magic in a way that was accessible, practical, and simple, whereas I feel like a lot of the occult books out there are very bloated and intimidating and kind of difficult to follow sometimes when magic in itself and practicing it, you can do it, you know, right away and it's and it's accessible and it's not something that should be kind of gatekeeped and, and hidden, though that's what makes it cool also. But I also like the idea of like, a typical top 40 type person practicing magic. Like that's the kind of world I want to live in. Yeah. Well, it's definitely been popular in the last, uh, geez, five to 10 years. I feel like since we've been doing this podcast and I don't know if it's cause we're focusing on it more, but I mean, it's changed my life a couple of times, but you know, as I learn, the more I learn the sort of the less I know about it. And, and I, I am also hesitant to continue in a way because I've, you know, I've had people sort of warn me, be careful with, especially with entities and spirits and, oh, yeah. you know, attachments and negative influences. And so, I mean, there's a ton of questions, questions here, but I guess we should start with, um, like get, get into a little bit more about why you didn't think there was any books like, cause you kind of cover different, you kind of cover a, a bunch of different topics at a, at a really easy to digest level. So was it because there wasn't, there was some focused on chaos and some on this and some on that, but not really on a mix of it all. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like that. And I saw repeating themes and repeating coincidences in the books about magic that I, that I had read that I kind of wished was just stripped to the bone type of magic. Like right. that was the type of book that I was looking out okay. to write and, yeah. and just, explaining it to people and trying to try as hard as I could to show the skeptic how practical magic can sometimes be sometimes in your life, because that is also a big part of magic. You know, a lot of people think or people who practice are crazy or, you know, none of this is real and or we're of the devil or any of that kind of stuff. So I kind of wanted to show how you could use it in your everyday life in a way that can also make life in itself more magical, you know, like 
with the connection of the word magical or however you associate with that. And um, yeah, I guess it was kind of like a, a remix, like a, a blender type of book, you know, of all, of all the stuff. And I had to deep dive study a lot of a lot of different types of magic and writing that entities chapter was such a relief for me because it kind of put together something that I started to understand in my own practice about spirits when I said that spirit uh, entities are spirits who like to do drag because I because I kind of had realized that when we call on spirits you know we're calling on um, I'm gonna, when we call on an entity we're calling on probably a spirit taking on that role with that vibration does that make sense yeah 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 so would you warn people about that I mean not you wouldn't I mean I uh... <laughs> I think there's yeah, you, I, you I did talk about it in your chapter, like, you know, the, the good versus evil thing. And, and it's it's pretty subjective on it's more about your intention than than what's out there, I think, is what you're trying to say. Well, I know a young girl who um, when she was 18, discovered the Satanic Bible and she completely misinterpreted it. And she did a, a ritual in which she sold her soul to Satan and she woke up with a bunch of flies all around and then she invoked a, a demon and all of this stuff started to happen. And uh, she started to get really bad sleep paralysis and all this started, like, a lot of crazy stuff started to happen. And then the entities started to have like addictions and, and fetishes and they would latch onto her. And, and, and so there's definitely a risk when you think that you're going into this stuff with so much confidence that you're more powerful or that you know how to handle these entities or attachments. For sure. Huh. So then, what's like? Uh, hmm, where Where's the best place to start? Because I, I mean, at what at what point are you doing magic <clears throat> inadvertently? All the time. Yeah, I mean, because like, that's my take on life: is you're always doing some sort of magic. Like, careful with your thoughts because they're doing shit. Yeah, yeah, and and that's a very cabalistic point of view, also. Like that, you're that your consciousness and how you think you're matching with a reality that matches that consciousness. And I've actually noticed in my own life, if I have negative thinking, well, guess who I get visits from negative entities, you know? And if I have really, am I, if I'm in a darker depressive state, I get negative entities visiting me because I opened myself up to that world, you know? So if I'm feeling lower vibrations, a lower, vibrational spirit will match to me but they say that energy and and the vibration starts in our thoughts and our minds so i think we can create positive entities angels guides all these positive things as much as we can create the negative ones but you're completely right we are all always doing magic well where do the where do you suppose psychedelics fit into that you know i, I just ate some mushrooms again on the weekend and I just, you know, that feeling you get is just, yeah, it's got to be, I mean, I find I'm a proponent that they're an antidepressant and good for your soul and all that already, but just those feelings of euphoria and love and everything else that you can get has got to, like, I feel like I could just, you know, and I'm having a fuck of a week already, and I feel like everything's just bouncing off me. That wasn't bouncing off me last week. Last week, that shit was getting to me a little bit. I've got a couple projects at work that are really tested my resolve. And I got to tell you, after, because I've been microdosing, and that it was still getting through. But then after a nice little Saturday night, I mean, I'm, I'm coming to this week, it's just like, whatever. Yeah, I think actually it's very interesting that you mentioned mushrooms because I, I find that people who are not open to magic, are not open to this stuff, and they're one of those people who are just born not with that innate desire to do magic or to believe in it. Once they, you know, do shrooms one weekend, they start to see reality different and they get revelations and it can be a portal to, to start to do magic or get yourself into astral projection or astral travel and, 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 a lot of people seem to use shrooms to have a metaphysical experience, you know, and I'm not, I'm pretty neutral on, on that kind of stuff, but if it opens a path for you and it's not harming you, I don't really see it as a problem. Yeah. But also free will, right? Like if you're going to do that, like every, everyone has a different type of way to 
alter their state of consciousness. Well, I, I thought of it because we we've talked to Thomas Hatzis multiple times now, and he's got a huge <clears throat> he's drawing all these correlations between witches and psychedelic mushrooms and and all that sort of stuff. So it seems like the two have been connected for a long time. Yeah, and I think Timothy Leary talks about that a lot, and Terence McKenna, and 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 there's there's that belief that psychedelics open up a portal but i think you can also if you're not that blocked up like and and and, and that that spiritually blocked up i think you can open that portal without those psychedelics also it just takes a lot of will and belief to shatter that barrier that is not making you believe in the metaphysical i mean something that makes me happy about magic is so and what i've experienced so far in life is, you know, the worst things can go wrong. Everything can be fucked to the point where you will not believe in this stuff anymore. And But that's the biggest test when you show up and have to believe in it. And you have to keep going. And I think I believe in that kind of like Herculean magic where you look at life as labors to survive rather than like, oh, I'm going to read a chaos magic PDF on Reddit and then not show up when the trials come. You know, I think that's like, I want a very realistic way of using magic. Yeah. Well, you're at your teachings are really action based, right? I mean, you can put yourself in that mind frame and do all the metaphysical work, but really it's also action. You have to try to, and we've been talking about that on the show a lot too, from the, whether it's the new thought or positive thinking, it still requires action, you know, positive action. Or yeah. It requires yeah, I, effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the secret isn't to just sit on your couch and hope you well, win the lottery. That's exactly like that's pretty much what he says in his book. It's exactly. Like, it's almost. I exactly get so like fucking that. sick of hearing. You know, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's like, well, what else are you doing? Oh, you're watching fucking TV from the time you get off work to the time you go to bed, and then you're spending a half an hour reading your little book on magic and doing your thing and hoping that, you know, your life turns around. It's like that's not how it works, man. You you put no. the fucking TV guide away, and, and start making some real steps towards towards turning that corner you know you just start with a little fucking thing that you can do tomorrow a hundred percent and you're exactly right it's about turning off the feeds turning off of netflix deprogram you can't you can't just sit there and do your visualization and then not have your habits mirror what you want to manifest into reality right it requires a lot of self-discipline a lot of will a lot of you know in the behind the scenes process of you getting to your goals requires you to change and transform. And if you just think that things are just going to show up, then you clear people clearly don't understand what magic is. Yeah. Did this, I mean, speaking, going back to sort of the mushroom and psychedelic acts aspect versus, you know, drugs and drinking or hard drugs and drinking. I mean, I've, I'm coming up on 12 years now. Uh, clean and sober, but my my whole metaphysical thing shifted like after that. I mean, I was always I was into a little bit of meditation and all that before before that, but after hitting my bottom and coming out of that is when my everything opened up for me metaphysically. And and I've heard a lot of people like I know of quite a few people that are clean and sober, and they've they have this this sort of metaphysical or or, or uh, um, mystical practice. And I, and you talk about that in your book a little bit too, right? Am the I straight edge? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you you're kind of you're kind of <laughs> chronic smoker, so it's hard to, you know, there might be some blockages there. You know, if if you maybe would lay off the weed a little bit, maybe because the mushrooms probably are beneficial and some weed, but yeah, I'm there might be some blockages more, there. I mean, I'm the first person to say I smoke a little more weed than I should, <laughs> but I'm not gonna, I'm not, you know. <laughs> Know a lot of people like that in Vancouver. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Be, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's well, a weed's a tough one. On sobriety, that's that's really amazing, and I agree with you. I think actually, magic is a great substitute for what addictions desires are, because I also struggle with addiction, and I know that whole process. And for me, metaphysics and magic was actually my way of realizing that I can reach out to external light and be more fulfilled rather than the, going into the chaotic hells and dungeons of the, the short, used, transient pleasures that addiction gives you. Whereas when I do magic, 
I feel so much more everything that I wanted from that pursuit of whatever addiction that I'm going down during that time magic makes is more fulfilling for me. Yeah. And it, and it, it's almost like a high, like it, it makes sense why recovery literature is around having a higher power right? because they, I don't know if shamans or some people, some metaphysical people argue that like addiction is like the op is, is spiritual disconnection. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's why when we make this fuse to get reconnected to the spirit world or, um, a metaphysical relationship with the upper worlds that's why it's so fulfilling and, and why i think it's so beneficial to my own sobriety as well and also like people don't like addiction is really like an everyday thing you know like you fight it every day you know and you fight that urge almost every day like you could you have to there's so much will and discipline to organize your life around making sure that you're sober and you're not going into those negative chaotic spirals. Yeah. And I think that also aligns with magic in a weird way too, like self-discipline, self-mastery. So I kind of had realized like by the time I had, I had finished the book that like with, with like what I, like all the resentment that I had about struggling with addiction and not being able to do the things that people could do just in moderation without wanting to obliterate myself. I had realized that, you know, like this is actually great because this extreme negative addiction sent me to an extreme positive spirituality. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, that's, I, I totally appreciate my, my background and where I came from. I mean, I, I don't think I would even change it at this point. I mean, I don't think I could be where I am without going through what I had to go through. You know? Probably a couple things you could have left out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I still go by that opposite of addiction is connection. And, and that's, that's yeah, not that's my exactly. line. I stole that from Buddy that was on Joe Rogan, but that really seems to be it, whether it's connection to spirit, connection yeah, to self, exactly. connection to others, family, other connection people, to yeah. others. Yeah. I mean, you can function. Those are kind of like the four wheels. You can function without one or two of them, but once you lose three or four of them, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, who said that on Rogan? Was it Russell Brand? No, it wasn't it was, Russell Brand. It was uh, Hate, I'll Jonathan Hate, maybe? No, Hate? you guys keep talking. Hate? I'll find out. Yeah. Hate, yeah, and, and, Hate's the and, coddle in the mind, dude. And I think the part of, I mean, the, the big part that I heard you talk about at the end of your book, which I was thinking, I wonder if he's going to, when he's going to mention, you know, meditation and mindfulness, but that's also a big part of recovery. And that was one of my, you know, tools at the beginning that really helped me get to that space of realizing that, Hey, like these, that's, I'm not my thoughts. I'm separate. Like I had one of those mindfulness experiences where I was watching my thoughts and realizing, well, who's watching my thoughts? Like, that's me. That's me, not the thoughts. And being able to separate that out and create that awareness of whether it's negative self-talk or emotions that I, want to accept instead of just push down or what, I mean, whatever that to me was the key to, to transcending addiction, but also in magic. I mean, intention and attention is so important. So I kind of wanted to ask you about that is, is you did have a nice section at the end of your book there about it and how important it is, but you wanted to talk about that a little bit and how, cause you know, to me, if you're distracted completely, like how, how effective at magic can you be if you're in your head constantly? That's, that's very, very true. And I think, you know, you're exactly right. We exist as pure awareness, you know, you know, we're not our thoughts. We're this midpoint watching the ego and our higher self consciousness, you know, and I think, um, magic and meditation are completely connected because you're right. When we're doing a visualization where we have a clear intention, our mind needs to be completely clear yeah. when we're practicing and meditation is that astral exercise to clear out our minds and and to reach that nirvana state i mean when i do tm it's like a it's like i can't even describe <laughs> it it's like the most euphoric thing like my whole body goes numb like i hear no thoughts and as an addict right the only thing i want is like internal peace constant or internal peace because yeah. i would use my addictions as a way to shut down to not hear anything yeah. and to know that that light was within myself to access kind of frustrated me because I was like, society taught me all wrong. Yeah. You know, it wasn't outside of me. Yeah, guys, totally. Society is not, yeah, it does not yeah, totally. have your best interests and in heart, my friend. <laughs> it nope. does not. I mean, it's, it's, it's a sad thing that we 
we're all built this thing and it's just turned against us. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even yeah. know, you know, maybe there is some evil motherfuckers in a castle somewhere pulling the strings, but it doesn't seem like that's the case all the time. It's me like my life can be shitty without those people, just from other humans. You know, yeah. there's I don't know what we did. But anyway, the opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. If you are alone, you cannot escape addiction. If you are loved, you have a chance. Quote by Johan Hari. Huh. Okay, sick. Joe Rogan number twelve fifty five or something like that. Oh, Johan. Yeah, Johan. it was it was a great it was a, that was a good show. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I liked how you talk about in your book about being able to withstand like Darren was talking about the society and the pressures and the, the whether it's the porn hub or the Netflix or stuff that's yeah. just really not going getting you down that path. And if you can, you know, transmute that energy into your positive you know, whatever you're doing to, 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 to find your path or to be on that path was key. And that was pretty inspiring. Like, you know, I even, even just last night, I am reading this big, this big thick book. And I was like, no, I'm not going to turn on Netflix and watch another episode of Vikings. Vikings. eh? you know, what? is I'm going to just like, cause I'm interested in all the North stuff right now too, but I'm just going to read another chapter in that book and try and read a chapter in that book every night because it's a huge book that I'm prepping for the show. And like, so yeah, just so sometimes you just need that little nudge. Why don't you go tumbling down the dune rabbit hole? I'm like, no, no, I'm like no. five books into fucking dune now. <laughs> Buddy turned into a worm. Anyway, um, fuck, I forget what I was going to say now. Yeah, I think for what you were saying, yeah, for sure. That's actually. The chapter that you're referring to is my favorite chapter in the book, You Are the Illuminati. I wrote that because <laughs> I was just exhausted seeing the societal pressure and what had become normalized in our cultural consensus about instant gratification, about narcissism, about approval addiction, all of this stuff. I was like, why are we why are we acting like this is normal? You know? People who act the way that people act on Instagram, like about you know, 30 years ago, they would be like, you have a personality disorder <laughs> or something, you know, like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, literally, like, there's this type of exhibitionism that is so normalized that I also found to be really kind of gruesome. So there was that aspect, but then also like what you said, the Pornhub, the Netflix, the feeds, all of that stuff. And I find that that stuff is an, is designed to be endless because it's designed to make you addicted. Yeah, totally. That's the number one addiction these days, I would say, that no one's talking about is addicted to um, social media. Yeah. Addiction, you know, whether that's whatever form of social media that takes. I mean, it's all sort of social media in a, in a way. But, yeah. I mean, that's definitely, you know, those little, you got all these, all the best psychologists in the world get hired by people to fucking figure out how to trick you into doing things that aren't good for you. I mean, it's a tough thing to be up against, but yeah, that's how it starts. But I I got hooked on that Messiah show on Netflix. Have you watched that one? No. It's pretty good. You should try, you should try yeah, it. Yeah, see, he's already <laughs> trying to... <laughs> <laughs> see, it's, 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 like, it's, it's like... It's like... It's just so... It's so what happens, you know? I feel like... I feel like... just That's the number one thing. You have to protect yourself because... <laughs> This stuff is so normalized. So as soon as you're like, I'm in my own world, you know, I don't do that. And then someone's like, hey, did you watch this on Netflix? You know what I mean? Or and all that stuff. And you have to reprogram yeah. yourself again. You're adding it to the list. You're adding it to the list. And I was stuff thinking the other check. day because I, I, I have been going down this Dune rabbit hole. I've been reading nothing but Dune for months now. And well, I'm, no, and I was no you were reading quite a bit. Well, I read before. a lot. I got audiobooks. I got a lot going on. But I'm like Dune right now, big time. And I'm wondering, is this is this the same? Is it the same as just being hooked on a Netflix show or being watching every Flames game? Am I is this the same thing? But then I'm like, I think it's a little better, just because your imagination is working constantly. Oh, that's interesting. You just challenged my own sense of thought. That, because, because I was like, like this, but then I was like, oh wait a second though, because I'm constantly, I'm not just reading this. I'm imag imagining this whole fucking Dune world, and that's why the movies always suck, right? Because you've yeah. read this book and you've built this whole world in your head. Now, that might just be my sorry-ass way of, you know, 
giving saying no, no, my no, justifying, it's justifying it or, right, yeah. my vice but i that was my excuse is that the fact that i'm building this whole realm in my head and is, is why it's i'm why it's not netflix yeah well you just i just thought of something i guess the difference is is that you know i feel like we're encouraged to binge watch Netflix. We're not encouraged to binge read books. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's a, it's not like read and chill is not a meme, you know? No, no, no. Like, like there's a positive element to sitting down and being focused and practicing your, your, your sense of focus. Like Cal Newport always talks about focus is so important in the digital economy. And I think there's something about sitting down and, and reading a book that requires focus whereas i feel like netflix can be kind of like vegetating a little bit you know yeah. just like numbing your brain so speaking of that you do dig into your book quite a bit about how to to transmute your your emotions let's say and energy so that could be considered like instead of you know going on to pornhub or netflix you're going to transmute that you want to describe a little bit more about that process of how you would f let those emotions happen i mean you talk about you know you're y younger uh, in your life and when you would not accept emotions and i guess now using those emotions in a magical practice yeah i mean i think alchemy is one of the most important parts of magic and it's kind of become, it's kind of become a buzzword in the past few weird years also around the self-help and a call type community but it's all based in magic and I think transmutation and locating the emotion, locating the feeling, just thinking of it as a color and then thinking of it as coming back as something more positive, converting that energy, you can do that. It takes a tremendous amount, amount of will, but you can change where the funnel, where you go down, you know, or the tunnel, whatever, you know, you just, you can change where your energy goes. And I think that is so important for people to know because a lot of the social media and our phones and all this stuff are hijacking our energy. And if you make that choice, you know what? I'm gonna transmute that uh, that that desire to go on Pornhub and open 50 tabs to actually, you know, going to the gym or going to go lift or working on my practice. And it's the same desire. It's just going from lead to gold. It's changing. And I think that is something that I push really hard to inspire people about because I think emotions are not bad things. All emotions are our energy. And I guess a lot of men also, you know, were socialized, fuck your feelings, fuck your emotions, blah, 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 this stuff. You don't need any of this stoicism, all that stuff. But you just think of it as energy, it's filling up your body. It's a great opportunity to remember to do magic. And that's why I say in the book, you know, have like a magical necklace to press on to remind you this is time to do my alchemy, you know, something, a visual cue. Like I think visual cues are very important for everyday magic as well. Yep. Good point. Um, do you want to, the other part I liked about your book and the way you're pushing people is out of victimhood and not to be the victim. Like you've got responsibility and control over your, your future and your life. Like I really appreciate that part that you focused on, you know, not being a victim being responsible and that's kind of what i like about the recovery community as well it's like you're you're taking your life back you know your authentic no self no blaming like you can recognize that shit happened and but not be let that resentment uh get a hold of you you know it's funny napoleon hill think and grow rich 1937 he's got a whole fucking chapter on transmuting sexual energy oh Yep. That yes, he does. Yeah. Well, you've got a you've got a chapter on that too, right? Sex, magic, uh, alchemy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's kind of that. What you just pinpointed yeah. was kind of the reference of that. I yeah, kind of yeah. just upgraded it yeah. to our modern digital world, and in the way that I talked about it. But yeah, sexual energy is so fucking powerful. That's why we're exploited twenty four seven when people say sex cells, they're saying sex magic cells, you know, magic cells, sex cells, hypnotizing you, exploiting your vulnerability towards wanting and craving sex is what these corporations do. And um especially as a young man, I saw that a lot in advertising too, you know, like buy acts, 
you know, because hot girls will, you know, want to date you or let's go see Transformers because Megan Fox is so hot. You know what I mean? Like there's just like there's just so much like you don't even question those decisions because they're so carnal you know, somatic you know, yeah. and so animalistic. And I think like when you take control back from that world, I think something can be extremely powerful about that. And it's exactly what you said. It's about accountability and, and taking taking control back for your life and not being a victim. You know, a lot of people also just find this stuff exhausting. They're like, hey, man, fuck off. I want to watch my Pornhub and I want to do whatever I want, you know, because actually changing your life, like you said about recovery, requires an extreme amount of mental effort and work that a lot of people don't want to put in. But if from our childhood, we're programmed to these negative conscious negative consciousness negative patterns negative belief systems then why wouldn't we try to undo them when they start to appear in our life you know and all that kind of stuff well not only that it's like are you really happy just doing that shit like is yeah that, is that your calling is that where you want to be when you're 70 you know because you know if you just take some of that time and put it you know you just i don't know yeah but don't forget no, i mean no, you're exactly right there's a distraction Cause, to because i right? was there yeah. Right? So I speak from experience, and it's not like I was living the dream. You know, you're fucking miserable most of the time. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you're doing is trying to distract yourself from that miserableness. Perfect. That's so just perfect... make your life not miserable, and then you won't need to the, dis the distraction. That's so, that's so perfect because, because that's exactly what that stuff functions as. It's a distraction from our emotions and our feelings. And what I... What I like about recovery literature and magic literature also is, you know, it's a way to validate those feelings, acknowledge them, process them, mm -hmm. let them come through, let them pass by, let them flash, and then move on, you know, whereas, oh, I can't handle it. I need to just escape right away, you know, like that, that just, for me, just leaves me into like hell, you know, it takes me to the underworld. Yeah. Literally the underworld. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like. I can't even describe. And sometimes it's not as hard as it may seem. The the pure act of acknowledgement di sometimes will dissipate it enough. That's really that's really true. Also, you know, like just the, the just the recognition of it is yeah. just a step forward yeah, yeah. of being like, wow, yeah. I can really alchemize. I can use yeah. magical alchemy. I can make this switch. Yeah. Sometimes just saying it out loud. Yeah. Or thinking and, about your life. whole fucking life doesn't fall apart just because you said some shit that yeah. you're too scared to say. Yeah. Anyway. So do you want to get into some, I mean, you've had some crazy experiences. I mean, just some people that are still wondering, you know, thinking this is all woo woo or whatever. But I mean, we've, I mean, it's changed, it's changed my life in the past. And, uh, do you want to talk about some of the stories that you've actually experienced? Yeah. If, if mean, you can, I mean, I know there's some, there's some, People that say you shouldn't talk about that, but I think if you're helping people, I think it's good to share oh, yeah, some things that sure. are, you know, that are for that sure. are beyond I'm, the I'm, realm of coincidence. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to talk about it. I mean, I think, well, there's the weird stuff, you know, like the entities sending you signs, like enter, uh, seeing repeating numbers, getting calls from numbers that, you know just like you do a spell and then the phone rings and then there's no air in the house phone, you know, just really weird, typical paranormal stuff, obviously. But when it came to end sleep paralysis a lot, when my early days was just a lot of entities dragging me in, around the house and, and weird, really weird shit. And then, but, you know, practicing magic obviously created really weird things. I mean, the Marilyn Manson thing is probably one of the most weirdest magical stories when I was 21 I um, discovered magic and I was like, okay, you know, if this shit's real, like, let's take this to the fucking next level, you know? <laughs> and I was like, let's like, if I want someone in my life right now, it would be Manson because of how much he's inspired me. And, and just in my, at that time in my life where I felt powerless, I felt powerful watching his interviews and he was just a big intellectual inspiration for me. So I was like, okay, let's just see what could happen? So I do this black candle magic spell. I just use black candle, a uh, black candle because he's a Capricorn. So I did the black candle magic spell, and then 
around like two weeks into it, like during the light of the moon where like spells usually manifest, someone was like, hey, you're not going to believe it. Like I met Manson at this party and he gave me his number. And I like, I don't know if like it, something took over me, but I was like very aggressive. I was like, give me his number. You know, I was like, <laughs> give, give it, like, give it to me. Like I'm doing this, give it to me. She's like, okay, cool. I'll give it to you. So she gave it to me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, do my another spell. I'm going to visualize him texting me back. And I'm going to visualize somehow him helping me or doing something for me in my life. So I did that. And I did the spell. And I was like, okay. You know, I waited like an hour or two <laughs> thinking that it, this, I was younger, right? I didn't know how magic worked. I was like, he's going to message me tonight, whatever. I was like, whatever, fuck this. I'm going to bed. I put my phone in the kitchen because at that time I didn't, well, I still don't have my phones in my bedroom. <laughs> and then uh, he texted me back and was like, hey, it's MM, sorry, been with Johnny Depp, what's up? And I was like, holy fuck, like, I, reality just shattered. Like, I fucking did it. Like, magic is real. And some people would be like, oh, you know, that's just a fucking coincidence or you know people who know Marilyn Manson and that just happens in your life and all this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. I am fully 100% in belief that that would have never had happened if I hadn't had done those spells and I hadn't casted out that energy. And then from there, we kind of collaborated on stuff. He he, re he released my Snapchat movie after uh, a Hollywood horror director I was younger, had like set me up into fake meetings and he was taking notes of my ideas and executing them behind my back because I was so naive and I just was so excited to collaborate and all this stuff. And he left me behind and I was like, I, I sent him the link and I was like, these are my ideas. What the fuck are you doing? And he's like, you're just some stupid kid. And I was like, oh, fuck you. And I got so mad. And then I, Manson tweeted out my Snapchat movie and that really got a lot of coverage and I, and that was really cool. And yeah, so that was, that was just probably my favorite magical story. And honestly, when I had, since I had done that spell, really good stuff in my career happened. So I think it's just really weird. And then what about the, uh, was there one with Swift as well? Yeah, Taylor Swift. I did. Because uh, that I was stopped. pretty interesting to me, bending reality with that too. I mean, fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, that was fucked. That was fucked. I didn't even understand how that could go that far. I mean, I had read, like, just, I, I really enjoyed her Reputation album because I just like this idea of not being a victim and just owning your reputation, not giving a fuck about what people think about you. And in this type of, you know, politically correct era and her, and, and just seeing how that situation with Kanye and Kim was kind of unfair. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to do like a healing spell and I'm going to write this piece I'm just hope that she sees it. And, you know, for paper magazine, I was like, you know, I'm just going to send out healing energy. And then I got, you know, a message that she had saw it and wanted to meet me. And then I met her and we talked and about like life a little bit. And I was like, after that, and then there's a picture of us. And I was like, and I was looking at it. And I'm like, this just looked like it just like fell out of like an altar, like am I peeling layers of reality with these spells? Like what the fuck is going on? Am I changing the order of the cosmos? Like I just didn't understand because, you know, I think also, I hope you kind of maybe had felt, I, maybe you had felt this way by the time I had you finished the book, but I felt like I kind of wanted people to be a little disturbed by my interest in pop culture and the way that I put those things and those people on pedestals as a way to kind of think about how society does that to us, how yeah, it creates yeah. separation in us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was like, I was explaining to Darren before we started talking. I mean, you know, you've got pop culture, you know, in your book and the forward and your, you know, you talk about meeting celebrities and, and you were pretty, pretty uh, aware to, to warn me of that, that it wasn't like, you know, you know, it wasn't about the endorsement of celebrities. Your book was about uh, deprogramming from the mass pop culture. So I appreciated that because right away I was just like, oh, hang on. Like this, this, <laughs> this could be going the wrong way, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, no, 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 for sure. And I think actually that was my way to allure people in yeah. using those. It's like a trap door. Like, hey, 
you're going to think you're going to read this book about this kid who did a spell to meet Taylor Swift, but you're actually going to learn real fucking magic and you're going to learn real practical, applicable tools for your life. And I think that was kind of fun for me to do because I like like pop and violence mixed together, you know, tricking people through pop into a different world. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So do, Darren, do you have any questions about that at all? Or, you know, no, I remember Marilyn Manson back in the day. We should have him on the show. <laughs> Give him my number. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he needs to, he's so connected to the occult and magic. I don't think he, he, he's been owning it in the, in the past few years, he's been talking about like Santeria and stuff in interviews. I have a few theories about him. I think him and LeVay did some weird shit. I feel like something happened there. Was LeVay around when, when he was there? He met LeVay. Oh. And, and before LeVay died, Antichrist Superstar blew up. So I was like, Geez. Was that his first album? No, it was his second album. Yeah. Smells Like Children? Smells Like Children was his first album, right? Fuck. No, we should know this. Because it had Sweet Dreams on it. That was the first yeah. album? No, Antichrist was... Was the was second the one with, like, beautiful people and stuff? I don't think that was the second one. I can't remember. It all happened so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been... So that, that's... I guess that was my point, is, like, I was listening to the first Aunt Madsen album. must have been 93, 94. Yeah. Did you think he was special at that time? I thought he was fucking crazy at that time. Remember, was like telling the stories about him getting ribs taken out so he could suck his own dick and all that stuff. Like, you know, I I was in like some hick town in like Nowheresville, yeah. Canada. Yeah. When when he was coming out, and I, I, you know, we were into him for that reason. You know, I the the occult and all that was was decades away from being on my radar. So, for sure. so for me, it was more just the Satanist aspect of it, I guess. That's the only real brush I had to paint him with. I think he's great. He He's great for that reason. I think every teenager should have a Marilyn Manson phase for that reason so they can kind of go through that thing where I'm like, fuck institutionalized thinking, fuck uh, things that are trying to control me, oppression, all that kind of stuff. I think LeVay also embodies an archetype that is important for rebellion and all that stuff but some people just take it so far and are so annoying about it so is levey yeah is that the yeah. guy that we had on the yeah. guy that went to spiritual battle against yeah LeVay? he cut his cord in the astral realm and killed, killed him. him yeah so we interviewed the guy Arthur that in the yeah. astral well world? Yeah. allegedly i'm not assuming any i mean it was I'm a not damn anybody a murder no well you no can talk. let me look up the well video. it's not murder if it's in the astral realm is it i mean anything goes in the astral realm <laughs> <laughs> hold up hold up we could, we could die in the astral world well he he cut his cord in the astral realm and and that's the night levee died oh so yeah that, it was a whole like it was a whole big event happening it was like, like it was 90s? like Back it was forth. deep spiritual warfare. Yeah, this is. He so, was yeah, a, I'll, I'll leave you the. I'll read you the synopsis from the app. The guy's name was Dave okay. Bryan. Okay. Dave Bryan, cowboy, pastor, spiritual warrior, joins us for a spine tingling chat about his real life encounter with possession and spiritual war warfare at the highest level, the astral showdown against Anton Levey. 20 years ago to the day, oh. the breaching of the Gadar, the writings of King Solomon, the concept of prophecy, and the highest level Pentagon intelligence clearance for some of the, these Satanists are just of the few of the things we chat oh. about during this Getting wild this episode. Fuck. Yeah, this show was fucking off the hook. And like, oh. I had crazy shit go down in my life after this show and stuff came on and i had my buddy garrett even saying like just be careful because crazy shit seems to follow this guy around his name's dave bryan so anyway yeah he went one of his friends was getting in deep with Le levey and it was getting weird so uh, apparently they had this whole spiritual battle going on and he won and then levey died wow that's so interesting grimerica.ca slash Ep 248. I'll be listening to that. That's insane. Yeah. I'll have Graham I think, email it to you. Do you guys like the Satanic Bible? I've never read it. Have you read it? No. No. Is it yeah. public domain? 
people people misinterpret i mean you, just like crowley of, stuff too i mean people misinterpret the oto as well and crowley i mean it's yeah but crowley man he's talked about he's he's yeah i i i i found all of the classics to be kind of underwhelming when i read them you know i yeah. was like this is it this is yeah this is it because i i <laughs> I was I was really upset actually. Like, yeah. I was like, isn't shouldn't Crowley's books be more? But then you you see people literally like worship him. You know, I mean, there's the whole kind of you know, like I say in the book, like people who wear like Thelema robes and like take this shit so seriously is the same type of magic that a guy is doing on a Friday night with a beer. You know what I mean? It's like, but some people like that drama to magic. They like the aesthetics. They like yeah. the yeah. Like, yeah, it's some weird. people just like drama. Period. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Cut those people out real fast. <laughs> Turns out. Um, so, can you give us an example of like what are, we got? Some people in the audience that are thinking right now, like I want to do some fucking magic. What's uh, what's like? What's some good baseline? Not too sketchy, not like, too no, far no, like, off like the keep, like path. keep the entities out, maybe break yeah, protection like, stuff. Like or kiddie like... pool, where people can end up with an addiction monkey on their back, <laughs> taking them down to the casino. You guys, you guys know how this shit goes down. Wow. Yeah, I think. Um, okay, so if we're gonna talk about like protection spells, I would say you know, grab a glass of water, put some salt in it, grab a spoon, you know, twirl it around in the water. And uh, maybe visualize white light protecting your body and just visualizing protection from the evil eye curse, people talking bad about you, all that kind of negativity. There's that stuff. And then there's, you know, grabbing a crystal and <laughs> visualizing white light coming to you. I mean, this is kind of the pussy stuff. So, like, I think, I, but, you know, it is, it's the starter stuff, but I think, like, it's cooler to... I think a candle magic spell, like, just go for it. You don't, I don't, I mean, if you're not calling on an entity, you know, maybe you're just sending out energy to the spirit. But that's, that's the thing I say in the book, which was such a relief to write. I wrote this chapter called, How the Fuck Do I Know When Magic Works? And um, it's kind of all these theories that I have about how it works. And one of them is that spirits and entities, you know, take a, uh, kind of bring us gifts and can bend our reality if we work for them. But I would say just like a simple candle magic spell, you know, just like it's something not for a specific outcome because you might not be able to handle the the trials that will come with that. Maybe just like, I want to feel more joy. I want to feel more happiness. I want to feel more good feelings in my life, you know, and maybe something like that. Just like that's, that's the real kitty pool stuff if you want that not the tree of life you know but <laughs> i liked your i liked your chapter on the candle magic and and the moon as well i mean the moon plays a big part in it for you right oh yeah for sure i'm definitely a believer in the astrological transits because i kind of made sure that i studied how my moods were under different moon phases and i studied the archetypes and i was like hmm like let's like investigate this a little bit and i was like no 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 this is too fucking weird that i would find myself doing the same things under Gemini moons or the same things under Aries moons or acting a certain way under a different moon phase. And I'm like, okay, is this like so deep rooted and subconscious that because I have this fucking information that I'm trying to make myself act like this stuff, or is this actually the planets and the cosmos emitting energies? And I, I, I believe in the metaphysical stuff. I believe, I believe that sometimes magic corresponds with, the astrological moon phases and i think that there's a lot of uh the planets can align if you know your birth chart you know it's very fucking weird to me that my book is coming out on a sagittarius moon which is my moon sign when i never planned for that and anytime big life events happen for me are on sagittarius moons i just as a magical practitioner i can't ignore this data i can't ignore these coincidences yeah yeah that's interesting so how would you would you if people were starting to get interested in it and play around with it to start paying attention to the moon cycle and and you would you explain how maybe what types of intentions would work during which moon cycles well like full moon versus think, new moon that kind of thing yeah yeah well a new moon is a great time to plant seeds 
new beginnings, start new things. It's, it's nature's, you know, the, the light of the moon is going to start. So it's like these two, it's the beginning of the two weeks of the light of the moon where we'll get to the moon growing in light till we get to the full moon. So I would say planting seeds on new moons, uh, big magic, big dreams, manifestations on the full moons and during the dark of the moon, which is what I've studied in my own life, lots of darkness and negativity and, and all the stuff that we have to battle comes up in, in the war of magic um, to alchemize and to actually do shadow work, you know, start to really write down uh, your negative thoughts and your negative belief patterns and, and, and start to remove those limited beliefs and, and dive deep during that time. And I, that's a good time for, cause I don't believe in banishing and, and bindings because it's just creating more negative energy in your head. So I think uh, those are those are great ones. And the light of the moon is great to just draw things into your life, like things that you want, you know, just anything that you want is a good time to do that. Mm. But yeah, like, dark of the moon, I watch like out the, for that one. I like that idea of uh, basing it around the moon. That's kind of like a built-in kick in the ass for people, you know, instead yeah. of having to look at their calendar or look at the oh, fuck, full moon, fuck. I didn't do my shit this month or whatever, you know, that's good. You know, you should do a little booklet, a little uh, workbook. Come on. Little yeah, moon, maybe the maybe moon, one day. The I, moon I mean, magic I, workbook. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, um, what, what you said is true because like I haven't missed doing magic on a full moon or a new moon in five years. Like I'm very strict and disciplined about it. If there's a, something want someone wants to do something on a full moon sorry i'm gone i'm in the woods with my candles like you know like <laughs> it's like a very dedication to my belief to magic and i did so many spells to manifest the book that you guys that you guys read you know yesterday um because i had to believe that i could see it in my head first before i manifested it you know i, I had to and i had to believe i had to trust magic to create what i created does it always come with a price? I mean, or is that, I know that I know some chaos uh, magic that friends of ours that have done chaos magic. And let's say like, for example, you know, they, they want, they need a certain amount of money and, and of course they forget about it. And then they do their little thing and they forget about it. And then they wreck their car for that exact amount of money. You know, I mean, there's yeah, yeah. story after story of that. And, uh, you know, beyond well, coincidence, you know, you can't, well, no, that's no, no, not, no, that, that, that's real. There's a cost. There's a cost for sure. And I think the cost is always different. And I think I learn from my costs. And actually, I like my costs because they're a part of my soul's evolution. And they're a part of me doing the work. If, you know, I learned that I wanted to do a spell to get a certain amount of success that I think will bring me fulfillment or put bringing me to a person that I think will bring me fulfillment and then it doesn't. And that's the cost of it sometimes is, you know, I'm like, why is my soul not fulfilled if I'm gaining material attainment? And that takes you to kind of to the next level of magic, which would be Kabbalah and the tree of life consciousness. But exactly that. And I've seen costs in the earlier days for sure. Like people can get hurt, you know, people, but you will still get what you want, but crazy chaos can happen. Yeah. And, and I think it takes a lot of, tools and will to handle the, those those trials because if you're not you're just gonna implode is there a certain type that that the cost is greater or is it dissipate is there less cost as you go along or is there any kind of for thing sure. like that for sure if you're doing magic for to feed your ego yeah. that's yeah. that's that's what i've learned yeah. the darkest type of magic is if you're if you're if you're if you're, if you're Getting magical, if you're trying to attain things for your, just yourself and you don't want to share it and you're, you don't have any intention to um, share what you attain with others or any type of will to facilitate other people and you're just doing it for me, 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 I'm going to live in my mental throne of my, pageant, my, my, my magic and my power, well, you're fucked. You're, the entities, the chaos, I mean, the demonic entities will fuck with you for sure because e – Feeding your ego is 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 an endless say it's you can't satiate it. No. It's endless. Yeah, your ego probably doesn't have your best interest at heart most of the time. 
It thinks it does, and everyone thinks that your ego is like that guy who thinks you're the best and thinks you're the toughest or thinks you're the smartest. Half the time, that's not your ego. Half the time, that ego saying, you can't fucking play that song, you loser. Don't even bother picking up the guitar. You know, you're never going to figure that out. Just go sit on the couch and watch fucking Netflix. That's your yeah, ego, exactly. too. Yeah, no, no, no. E- ego is, the ego is very sick and deceptive and negative because it's about, the, uh, it's about your attachment to your identity. And, and it's and it's so full of fear. It will just generate fear. It's shame FM, you know? It's just fear. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why mastering the ego is how you can get to your goals because I think, and, and achieve your goals because the ego is this enemy, this voice, because so many people believe that first thought from the ego of I'm not gonna pick up the guitar. And then there goes all that talent, you know what I mean? But if they're just like, Hey ego, I'm watching you, but I have divine will. I have my soul's will. I'm going to actually bypass you, you motherfucker, and I'm going to do this. You can do it. I've seen it happen in my own life. I've been plagued by self-doubt in certain scenarios and I've seen negative thought patterns appear before good things could happen for me. And I because I just tried to change the way that I related to myself and I was just like, you know what? Just it's just music in the background. It's just music. I'm not listening to you. Fuck you. And it, and it's and it's it's uncomfortable. It's discomfort. And I was just like, you know what? And I saw that and also the ego lies to you. It's just usually cognitive distortions. Like nothing you you think of in your ego is real. <laughs> I find it helps to give them a name. I named yeah. mine Frank. Sometimes what Frank has good ideas. Usually Frank's an idiot. <laughs> That's fucking sick. Yeah. But no, when you exactly. can when you can think, fuck Frank, it helps. I think I got it from the Untethered Soul. Oh, well, I don't know. It's one it's of the these, first time hearing of this. It's one of these books I read that just give those start giving those voices in your head a name, and then they'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's epic. No, that's real. That's real magic right there. It's just like, just organize it you know say it's an entity say it's like this evil voice or not well not even evil or just a loser or just someone you don't you wouldn't listen to just be like who the fuck is this guy i'm not listening to you and then that way you get to hear your own voice your own consciousness yeah Yeah. and and it feels different because you're like in control of your life that way but i think depression and ocd and all this type of stuff and all these cognitive distortions and even personality disorders are symptoms of the ego Hmm, interesting did you do you still have sleep paralysis uh, happen at all, or did you do anything to actually like get rid of that? Well, it actually started to happen when I was talking to Manson a lot, which was really freaking me oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> and and there were a lot of paranormal experiences where I would be like asleep, and I would wake up at three a.m. and my phone would be on silent, and then he would text me and be like, "Wake up," and I'd be like, "What?" Like like you know like I'm not saying he did mad he was doing magic on me at some point or that he had some type of control in my head or any of that stuff but a lot of people say he's a haunted person and um that was was weird you know anytime i would engage with him a lot of paranormal activity would happen or i would get sleep paralysis and i think but um the sleep paralysis stopped when i started to get away from my addiction oh okay went into recovery actually awesome like i haven't had it since since a long time you've had it right uh no no no, just oh, wow. friend, my girlfriend has quite a bit. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah, my girlfriend and, uh, and other people, psychological, other people I know. No, I, I think it's deeper than that. I mean, the, the only time I, we were able to deal with that, we, we got rid of it so, so far, it seems is through like protection magic, like the actual oh, okay. time, the actual time that she was being attacked. And I did that. It made the guy disappear. Like the shadow demon whatever it was like fucking like he didn't he left the only time he's ever left like so it happened twice where we were long distance like she was away from me at the time and i did that and uh both times like one time he started like laughing and he couldn't uh he couldn't do anything and and turned around and left so it is really strange that the yeah yeah no that that's definitely definitely a thing and and i also always hear stories about people doing protection spells and and then sleep paralysis stopping and um yeah did you use like salt or no just it was kind of more of a uh a sigil kind of ritual type thing yeah okay cool yeah Yeah. is that your favorite form of magic uh no not really i like it but i i don't really do it very often 
just uh, I've been just trying to sort of meditate, do some more deeper uh, intention work and that kind of stuff lately. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned, do you think it's psychological? Yeah. Uh, I had that question because, I mean, I go back and forth on whether it's all fucking psychological because the nature yeah, of reality, reality is pretty thin and I, that relates to magic and does it work that way because, I mean... That's the whole Scott Adams side of thing, and he's, you know, Scott Adams is Scott Adams. But, I mean, he's got a lot of great stuff out there that r directly relates to manifestation and magic. And his whole idea of it is that it's all simulation and it's more like hacking than magic. See, I also talk about that theory in, in, in my, my book my, also because I, I also have thought the exact same thoughts that you just said like am i just mesmerizing myself into a certain state where you know if you're doing um i'm doing if you're some people do like charm spells where they're they're trying to like uh, boost their sexual charm and then they go out and then they notice you know more people looking at them but is that because subconsciously you did the spell you willed yourself into that hypnosis and then you started to notice people looking at you more which would be exactly what you're saying, hacking reality. So in a weird way, in both, it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it fucking yeah. works. So if it's getting the job done, if it's psychological, if it's metaphysical, that's the type of magic that I think should exist. Is And that's why I think we should keep practicing it as people because we need to learn what the fuck is this, you know? I agree. My question is more... Is magic working because it's all like it's all psychological? Oh, like reality is reality. Psychological? Reality. Oh, is, like like our interpretation of reality. Yeah, it's like well, no, like like we're all sort of co-creating a reality that isn't actually physical. Oh, that's sick. Because this yeah. is all empty space. It's all empty space, but it's all here, and there's, you know, walls and shit, and we all sort of agree on that. But okay. at the end of the day, it's all empty space, and it's all fields, and none of, nothing's really here. So mm. is is it, are we, so are we actually in some sort So more sort consciousness of, is, as opposed to psychological, you mean? Well, maybe, yeah, consciousness is, yeah, it's more consciousness than psychological, but <clears throat> the same thing, sort of, you know, my beliefs directly affect my reality. So believing in magic makes ma magic possible. If you don't believe in magic and you're going to try it out anyway, it's not going to work. Because See, your fucking reality is based on you. See, I, I also agree with that. I think there's a sense of holographic virtualness to reality. And I think the fact that virtual reality and people existing in, in these worlds where, you know, there's some teenagers today who don't even have friends in person. All their friends are from TikTok and Instagram and Twitter, you know, and, <laughs> and you know, would we say that they're not in reality or are they in their reality where their reality literally exists on a screen, you know? And I that we could argue that about our own reality. Like, is this all just holographic? And did I fucking create this in my head? And is this why I'm here? And is this, you know, all that, that kind of stuff? Because what your, your theory would argue that we're constantly creating reality in our head because it's, because it's virtual. Yes. We and are you, something. You believe that. Yeah. Well, I think I come some, uh, my personal beliefs are kind of fucking weird, but, you know, I think it's sort of, sort of some. And these are new. These are co fairly new co beliefs. Like you're not you co-created co co conscious, co-created reality. That we're co-creating reality. That uh, we probably come from some sort of group consciousness that is sort yes. of individualized itself, so that the universe can experience itself through our ex individual experiences. But we're actually not individuals. We're one. Wow. Yeah, kind of like that's... ants. And when you die, you're going to go back to that. I don't know if we're one one or if it's like a soul group thing or how reincarnation fits into it. But more and more, I think it's like when you check out of this motherfucker, it's like back to source. That's so interesting. There's something in Kabbalah called Ein Sof, which exactly is just what you said, is that we're all stripped from the exact same cloth and we're all just a group soul and we're all just a group consciousness and we're all... We just all exist as um, mirrors to each other, and we're just souls orbiting around each other. Well, that's how that shit works. Like, anytime someone's really triggering you, 
you should probably go do some journaling because you're fucking <laughs> noticing your reflection in a mirror most of the time. Oh, a hundred percent. Anytime I have like a high emotional reaction to something, I'm like, Oh, that's me that I'm reacting to. Totally. You know, I'm just, re I'm reacting to, a, uh, and, and you know, those people, like you said, people who like to play the victim or people we, we're, we're such in a culture of victim consciousness, you know? And I think it's very difficult because of course, as human beings with empathy, we can see that, that, you know, people experience victimizations, you know what I mean? And, and everyone has pain and suffering and trauma, but the kind of victimization consciousness that we're seeing in our culture where it's like, everyone care about what I went through, you know what I mean? Or everyone, everyone listen to, to my, my problems and my trauma because that, and, and, and for that reason, I need to dictate another person's reality. Like they put a trigger warning on clueless in some universities. <laughs> clueless yeah. got a trigger warning yeah. so you know that that but you know that identity politics fucking black hole is, is you know dark too and a dark magic in itself well like, yeah clueless. but i mean i was kind of going to ask about darren's theory and your theory about so is everybody's perception and intention then mixed with each other and something is created out of that like because it's it's not just my will and my intention that creates my reality because it's so here's I'm, like our auras are interacting yeah. right now so. so as i understand it and i don't know fuck all but fuck all but so you can if this is why manifestation is is sort of the key to the thing because this is why you can manifest so i can't i can't man i can't create my reality in such a way <clears throat> that it's going to start screwing up your version of reality. So I can't start flying or I can't start, you know, changing shapes or stuff like that. I can create a company to employ a hundred thousand people or something down the way and I can affect their reality that way. Or I can, so anything that's within myself, my own sphere, that's what I've got influence on. So your own drive, your own ideas, your own things, anything you want to get in that starts cre affecting other people's reality. Now, I mean, there's room for, there's probably room for yeah, Reiki and all that room, down well, the line of, well. line eventually, but I just, that's where the sort of boundary is. I think there's some sort of boundary that my, my bubble can't grow into your bubble. It can't envelop your well, bubble. Unless my, my bubble is, unless my bubble is actually like tainted or open to influence. I mean, you know, I mean, you got it, and then what well, if what uh, if people are advanced like, advanced spiritually? Well, they can they can manifest sure. levitation, or they can maybe. they can change physical aspects of their being. I mean, maybe for them, but not for, they can't make you fly. Right, right, yeah. And I'm even so even making me fly seems a little bit out there. Like I really think it's a personal thing. You can affect your reality, but it can't start going against everyone else's. Like you're not special. You can't just change reality and all these other million people are like, how do you do that? It's got to be done in such a way that fits within all the algos. Whoa. And the algos are probably racist. So hard. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, that's, that's really, I mean, everything you just spit was true. Like that, that I agree. I agree with that. I think, and I I like think that's you, also Alex. directly, that's directly connected to magic also. And probably why it works is for that reason but, because but it's our reality we're affecting but there is like if you were mainstream media and you were with another group of mainstream media and you're spouting lies you are affecting other people's reality like there is a there's a dark magic or also. a dark like there's a dark thing going on with mainstream mainstream culture reality. and you're affecting their subconscious or their consciousness so that they can then affect their own reality oh boom that's that's true. That's true. That's true. So it's like free will. Yeah. You still got free will. Me and you could be watching. So the, the, we, me and you could be at home watching CNN right now too, but we're not because we have the free yeah. will to decide. Yeah, how to yeah, do that. yeah. No, no, that's yeah. that's that was so fucking true. It's the it's the point. It's because they're planting the subconscious seeds to then make you to make you interpret your reality so has have you ever done like a deep dive on the fucking news cycle against the moon phases i wonder the if there's a cycle? cycle yeah i wonder if they're doing fucking magic through the media in cycle with the moon oh uh you 
there was an announcement in Vancouver about rideshare on a full moon that I found to be really weird and it was <laughs> random and they just did it. So that that's one time I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but, yeah. but um I I would I would probably yeah, no, I, everyone in Hollywood and corporations are doing magic. I mean, there's been people I've met, celebrities, people who you would never think are doing magic, but they, they say, we don't talk about this. We're not supposed to talk about this. Why are you talking about this? I think Grimes and Elon Musk do magic, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think Grimes does good magic. And, and hey, um, there's I, only one Grimes think, around here. What? There's only one Grimes around here. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um. But yeah, I think uh, I think I think exactly. I think yeah, no, I think there are corporations and people who are attuned to the moon phases and do things attuned to the moon phases. People hire astrologers. I mean, Kabbalah, which is so famously connected to celebrities and CEOs and Hollywood and all that stuff, is at baseline magic. It's literally just magic with a K. And um, I think you know when when that started to happen in our culture, that was just everyone doing magic but uh yeah well who's the, who's the billionaire that said was it uh buffett or whatever buffett. that said billionaires are astrologists or use astrologists but not millionaires or something like that yeah that's right yeah. millionaires don't do astrology only billionaires yeah but yeah. i mean i mean let's be honest these fucking crazy assholes are doing some crazy ritual shit i mean they're doing it at cern i mean they open up the new cern experiment and there's some shit going on that i'm Hello? like what in the fuck is happening Oh, we're back. No, oh, I had to go. I had to mention CERN. Oh, sorry. Is CERN on the no talk? Because they go caught ahead. you. <laughs> go they ahead. caught you. Just when you were about to say it, they caught you. Go. go what were you saying? I've never heard well, you talk about Well, didn't you see this that? Like, you, well, I see you see it all the time. Whenever they're like opening a new this yeah, or yeah, new yeah, that, yeah, the yeah. videos are flying around, and yeah. the CERN was one. Yeah. I forget what it was at CERN, but they're they're dressed up as fucking parrots, and they're doing all this crazy stuff, and it's like. There's no way that's not a ritual. Like, yeah. you, what, you guys just dream this up? This is like your cheer? <laughs> Come on. And it's everywhere. Did you guys ever know about Sanctum, the sex Illuminati uh, sex club that was in Hollywood and, like, Bill Maher and all these people were connected to it, SNCTM? It was like a sex magic club for the elite. So yeah, I heard a little bit about that, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly... And, and even like, what's the other one where Alex Jones infiltrated? What the what are they doing out there? Seems fucking weird. They're oh, Bohemian Grove. Yeah, yeah, Bohemian, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it falling apart though? Like the like the, the celebrity the, culture, the pop culture, the you know, it's it's getting to the point where people are craving real conversation. I think, and all this f sort of fakeness the ads the the faux outrage the virtue signaling i feel like it's starting to backfire yeah it is starting to backfire and i and i don't think you know the answer is the identity politics reaction faux, faux, because there's there's also like a faux outrage to to the outrage also you know yeah and i think like you know like jordan peterson and those types you know i think it those type of people can actually be kind of dangerous for society because I think they replace a higher power for certain people who are powerless and young. And they look like you go to a fucking Jordan Peterson show. It's like a Scientology thing. It's like David Miscavige, you know, like it really feels that way. People like stand and applaud. I read the fucking book. It's just self-help. He's just saying basic <laughs> shit from feminism and identity politics and, 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 you know, fuck, fuck liberals and all this stuff. But it's just, it's just as another black hole of, of magic. You know, I think it's another way of hypnotizing people. Um, and I, I think thought leaders are very dangerous, in, yeah. honestly, in yeah. our culture. Influencers. That's what it is called these days. Yeah. Influencers. Fuck influencers. Yeah, it's, 100%. yeah, yeah. Be aware. Yeah, be aware of that stuff. Watch out for that. The pendulum swings both ways, and either side of that pendulum is probably a dangerous place to this be. This you know? is why you got to support the show america.ca slash support so that people can be watching content like this instead of these other fucking influencers <laughs> trying to steal your magic 100 percent, and i think i think these type of spaces are what should be on when everyone's watching cnn can you imagine how different the world would be if people were watching this instead of cnn you know what i mean yeah. like 
Well, you can get a glimpse of that if you head into the chats, gunamerica.ca slash chats. We got about 600 people in there uh, living a different life. We've started a commune. Didn't you say you're not far from Washington? Commune's in Washington, just outside of Wenatchee. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm in Vancouver, so. We're yeah, going, yeah, when we we're, go down there, you come down and do a little, quest. like, we'll have you there for a weekend, do a little seminar, a little uh, workshop with us. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be really cool. We're yeah, doing man. a vision quest on March 21st, and I think we're doing something else June 13th. Not a, like, not a real, well, yeah, kind of. Well, so, yeah, we're eating a bunch 13th. of mushrooms and having some visions. Yeah. You're chaperoning yeah, this event. Season. What signs are you guys? I'm uh, a cancer. I'm a Pisces. Oh, shit. I'm a cancer. Oh, yeah. And that's crazy. You, so we're all water signs. <laughs> Cancer's a water sign? Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, the most sensitive of course it is. Sign that <laughs> the Cancer's the, sign the most that, sensitive sign? I thought Pisces was the most sensitive sign. Well, P- Pisces, Pisces is sensitive also. Cancers feel things that aren't real. They have like paranoia and, and, and distortions and they have to sort through their feelings and anxieties of things that aren't real to get to their real feelings. And they also believe in like, I'm going to give away so much of my love to everyone, but like, then I'm going to play the victim about it. And oh. be like, no one cares about me. No wow. one cares. Wow. But Pisces, Pisces is, well, all the shit you just spit was very Pisces. Pisces are on another level. Have you astral projected? Uh, I might accidentally <laughs> astral projected last time I smoked DMT. Well, there you go. It's tough to say. I, I'm not. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Like I, I, after my 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 couple DMT sessions, I got into meditating for a while, but my life's so fucking busy. I slipped out of it again, and I'm just, I'm always chasing something down. The weed might you block the the weed might block the astral projection too a little bit. Could be. You yeah. got to track it. If you if you get like an app where you like see the the squares of like. Oh, I did meditation today and like the dope, you have to hack the dopamine in your brain. Like you can mm-hmm. create augmented reality games for your goals in your life. That's what I'm doing right now by learning French. I'm on a 47 day streak and it's like, I can't fuck this up. So, I'm, no. so I, I do my 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Yeah, and like that's what it is. Now it's like a little like... dopamine hit when I hit my little thing for the day. Ding. Yeah, 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 it's like it's, it's like, like a little a, rat like a in the maze. It's like a video game. It's like Zelda. Yeah, totally. I should get the water drinking one and the astral projecting one, and my life will be set. There you go. You just have to because when we're playing video games, right? We're 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 we we hook ourselves onto the levels and all that stuff. But life is a video game. There are levels. You know, a a gatekeeper is just like a a villain boss that you need to defeat. You know what I mean? Like there's just different tactics to get to the things that you want. I completely use the video game tactic of augmented reality. I mean, when all those kids were playing Pokemon go and augmented reality was becoming cool. That was also very scary. That was like watching like a, yeah, (laughs) yeah, totally like a brainwash programming with everyone who played Pokemon go. was like, what the fuck is this? I never touched that. I was like, you guys have all lost it. Um, you can use augmented reality for a positive thing. Like I would create like for finishing each chapter of my book, I would fit, create like a fake reward that I, I that I would pretend to, that I would get after and and it would push me because I was in the reality and believing that I was going to get that reward and all that kind of stuff. I think people I mean that's just basic like NLP nor neuroassociative conditioning. That's like magic also. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy is magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on. So what else is there that you want to mention before we uh, wrap this thing up? You know what the interesting thing about therapy being magic is? Is that it's really just the conversation that seems, it's the words that are the magic. Yeah. You just need that therapist there because you don't fucking trust any of your friends enough to say that shit to them, (laughs) which is a crime Well, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, that's one of the reasons why the recovery... If community you ha- works too because you start confiding each other and, and you're able to use yeah. each other in that way a little if bit. we all had real intimate relationships with our peers then no one would have to pay therapists to listen to their problems yeah because everything's so superficial superficial and vapid i mean if i would say anything to your audience i would say question everything every like you program yourself from anything that everyone else is doing and if there's something that everyone else is doing 
that doesn't feel right for you, trust that instinct and do what feels right for you. Try to be open to learn magic and try to create more of a relationship to the upper worlds because it's your innate birthright to have that. And um, create some cool shit in the world. You know, have try to have fun in the process of it. And pretty please buy my book. Yeah, and read <laughs> pop, read pop magic. Is that buy shit out on audio? Yeah, yeah, it's it was it's a great it's a great handbook to have for all this. I mean, you go through all the little chapters. Of, is of is all it out that. on audio yet? We're, it's coming on audio. It's we got on one audio. of the best narrators actually, in the country yeah. here no, for hire. Yeah. No. Well, I actually, I actually, someone, people were like auditioning to like use my wow. voice in the, in the book. Yeah, it was fascinating. That's fantastic. So I, I hope the guy we got is locked down. But yeah, I know you guys, you guys have great voices. Well, I think uh, I'm going to get your email address because I think me and you need to chat again. I'm going to shoot you yeah, an email. Sure. I also got another show I want to get you on. Uh, so I'll email cool. you about that. But yeah. Um, Man, what a great chat. Yeah, Are you on fantastic. social media or anything like that? Yeah, where no, should people no, go no, to get... No social media for me. Fantastic. I love it. Where should people go want... to get... Where should they go to get your book? Uh, any Everywhere books are sold, buy it on Amazon Prime so you can get it on Fuck February Amazon. 18th. Oh, well, yeah, you know. Okay, Amazon also. <laughs> but go to Chapters if you're in Canada. That's sick. Um, support Canadian when... bookstores. I mean, wherever books are sold, just okay. buy the book. Cool. When's it coming out? February 18th. February 18th. What is it today? The 12th. Today's so, okay, 12th. in six days. So, so this will probably, there, right? yeah, this will probably be coming out on maybe Friday. So it'll be a few days after the release. So good timing. Oh, sick. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this, so the podcast will drop next Friday? Yeah, this, this Friday. Probably, this Friday. Yeah. yeah. Usually we oh, have, usually we have more in the can, but uh, you're We've like out amazing. next. Yeah. Wow. So, we weren't supposed to be this be tight because this and... was supposed to happen on Saturday. Yeah. Right. Oh no! This wasn't this one. This was yeah, the next yeah, one we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had, we've been having some technical problems, like a motherfucker. But I think we got them sorted out. Mercury, Mercury. Oh, is that yes, motherfucker Mercury. retrogating again? Is that all it does? <laughs> yep. yep. Is that like half the time it's retrogating and half the time it's not? Retrograde, man. This shit's real. I'm coming around. <laughs> I'm coming around. You're, you're coming around with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Reach around. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Alex. Uh, come back anytime. Yeah, this is fantastic. We got people in the chat saying thanks, this is one of the best ever. So Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Bro. Thank you guys so okay. much for everything, and thank you for what you guys do with your show. I'm really grateful to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Have a Take great care. night, sir. <laughs> All right. That was our chat with Alex Kazemi, Pop Magic. I know, I know. One. I recommend a lot of the books that we read here, but this was good. It was an awesome read. I didn't Especially even if you're know into magic, what yeah. it was going to be about. I had yeah. no idea what to expect. I know. I like I mean, that. I like I that. Like, See, it's. Ooh. I run my whole like thing just on the calendar description. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, and I, a lot of times I don't put a lot in there because yeah. I know, so I'm like pop magic. I'm like, what, what the it? fuck does that is mean? Is it like yeah. a pop up book? <laughs> <laughs> It didn't even. I didn't even think pop culture did not even uh, cross my mind. Yeah, he talks about like types of spells and rituals: candle magic, sigil magic, elemental magic, sex magic, love and sex magic, alchemy, charging items, protection rituals, purification entities, black magic, all that kind of stuff. It's awesome. Then, good chapter in meditation and. Speaking of magic. The mag, Grand America support magic, grandamerica.ca slash support, where your magical support dollars help us keep this show going, help us keep the bills paid. We've been doing it for coming up on seven years now. We've managed to keep this value for value model going where we do all this stuff and release it all for free. And if you guys find some value with the product and all the interviews, I think this will be number 403. Um, you know, you head over to grandamerica.ca slash support and you sign up for a monthly via Patreon, PayPal, Stripe, do a one-time donation. I will say there's been in, uh, uh, three or four one-time donations this week. Awesome. Those Thanks. Are, those are a huge help. Oh, yeah. It's a huge the help. bank account a little bit. Um, so, yeah, uh, grandamerica.ca slash support, whatever you can do over there uh, to help, it helps. Of course, check out the show notes. Everything in the show notes supports the show to some level as well. There's a bunch of stuff you can do there. Uh, review the show, share the show, tell your friends about this motherfucker. Email Graham. 
Email Graham, spam Graham, Graham at GrahamAcromerica.com. Give us some content for the show. You can mail stuff to the P.O. box. Anything. Share us on social media. Follow us on Facebook. All that stuff helps. Uh, support helps most of all. GrahamAmerica.ca slash support. And we love you for it. You guys are the best. You've got the best listeners in the business. Uh, yeah, so big thanks to Alex for coming on the show. I feel like I'm I'm not done talking to Alex. I feel like... Yeah, I know. That's weird. It's not again. very often you just throw yeah. through like, I'm going to email you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in live. We'll be back in like a half hour. And we'll be Less back in that. 30 minutes. We might, might even start earlier if you want. We can probably start You want to email him then? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll be back in the next 15 or 20. Hey, Joe Fusco, Jesus might have said, don't do magic. I would argue we have no idea what the fuck Jesus said because whoever printed all them Bibles had creative control there for a few minutes.